Welcome back to my channel. My name is Beth from BethPavlik.com and today I'm going to talk to you about the Montessori homeschooling method. So if you're new to homeschooling, you might not know that there are different homeschooling teaching philosophies that you can pick and choose from. And it's really nice to know the background of each of those teaching philosophies and what they really stand for and the method that goes behind that philosophy so that you can choose which one is best for your family. So with the Montessori method, it actually started in schools. It started at the beginning of the 20th century. Maria Montessori was the one that started this philosophy, hence the name, the Montessori method. It was named after her. And what happened was she was a physician in Italy in the beginning of the 20th century, and she studied um, kids that had special needs in Italy. They were sent to these um, institutions, and she went and worked with them and actually got them up to a higher level of understanding and education than the kids that were in normal schools um, in Italy at the time. And so it got her thinking, why aren't these normal kids kids able to get a better understanding and education in these traditional schools. And so she started to come up with her own method of teaching that is completely different from what we see in schools today. So this was a woman that was highly educated in Italy at the time, and she saw what was happening in regular schools, and then she saw um, what was working with these special needs children, and she observed children, and they sent her into the schools and she was able to see what really worked for these children and what really didn't work for children. And so she did a lot of research and she actually worked with real children and came up with a plan for teaching them that really proved to work much better than conventional school. So I have so much respect for her and her method, and I've read many books on her method and how to use it, but the funny thing is that it's mostly used in schools. There are Montessori schools all over the, probably all over the world. Um, there's a lot here in the US, and it's interesting that homeschoolers can adopt this method too, because you'd think it would be um, just in schools, but homeschoolers can use this as well. So what I wanted to point out today, just in this introductory video, was the nine principles for the Montessori method. And this is important because if you are studying the Montessori method and wondering if it's right for you, you have to know what the framework of this method is. So I'll give you the nine principles. The first one is movement and cognition are closely entwined and movement can enhance thinking and learning. So as opposed to conventional school where kids are sitting in desks most of the time, listening to a teacher lecture at the front of the classroom, Dr. Montessori believed that kids need to be up and moving and not just sitting in a desk all day and that it actually does enhance their learning experience. Number two, learning and well-being are improved when people have a sense of control over their lives. So as opposed to conventional school where the teacher and the administration decides everything that the students are going to learn and how they're going to learn it in the classroom, in the Montessori classroom, the students are able to choose the activities themselves. Now, the teacher still provides those activities for them, but they are free to roam around the classroom and choose the different activities for themselves and how long they're going to work with those activities and which ones they don't wanna work with that day. And that actually helps them to learn because they feel like they have some control over what they're doing all day long. Number three, the ability to direct one's attention in a sustained and concentrated way fosters an array of positive developments and is itself trainable. So Dr. Montessori really emphasized concentration um, in her classroom. And when they are concentrating and get really giving their full brain power to an activity, it's very good for their learning. Number four, people learn better when they are interested in what they are learning. This is just huge. Kids learn better when they are working on things that they are actually interested in. 
Kids retain that information when they are actually interested in it. Super important. And in the Montessori classroom, kids are able to pursue what they are interested in, as opposed to conventional classrooms where they might be interested in something, but if that's not on the lesson plan for that day, they cannot pursue it. They don't have the time. Number five, tying extrinsic rewards to an activity such as money for reading or high grades for tests negatively impacts motivation to engage in that activity when the reward is withdrawn. So in conventional school, kids are motivated by good grades or stickers or other special reward systems like putting marbles in a jar for every good thing that they do or every assignment that they finish and then at the end when the jar is full, they get a class party, that type of thing. It actually shows that it's negatively impacting their kids' learning because once they take those away, the kids have no motivation to learn anymore. Number six, collaborative arrangements can be very conducive to learning. So in the conventional classroom, most of the time students have to work alone and the teacher is guiding them in activities. In the Montessori classroom, they show how kids working together on projects and also peer tutoring can actually be very, very effective. Number seven, learning situated in meaningful contexts is often deeper and richer than learning in abstract contexts. So how many times have our kids in traditional classrooms learn something that they had no idea what it was about, why it was important, how it connected to real life. In the Montessori classroom, they really do focus on all of their concepts that they are teaching their kids connected to real life and making it meaningful, making it having a purpose behind everything that they are doing. So important. Number eight, particular forms of adult interactions are associated with more optimal child outcomes. So in the conventional classroom, the teacher is guiding the students in a whole class framework, and then they are giving assignments, they are giving grades, they are giving feedback. And in the Montessori classroom, the teacher does not teach to the whole class. She teaches one time how to use the materials, and then she gives the students the freedom to choose the activities that they want to do for the amount of time that they want to do it. And there are no grades, there are no tests, and when the teacher is observing the students, she makes sure that it is not obvious that she is observing them. And she does write down notes about all of them, but she does it in a way that the students do not know that they are being evaluated. Number nine, order in the environment is beneficial to children. So this means that everything in the Montessori classroom is um, arranged in a certain way. Um, there, Every activity that is on the shelf is there for a specific purpose. And nothing is just, nothing is put in there without an express purpose. And the children are trained to put things away exactly how they found them um, before they get a new activity out. So in summary, the Montessori method is really just the complete opposite of the conventional classroom. She really just started from the ground up with her education philosophy. She took nothing from the conventional classroom. It's so, so night and day from this conventional way of learning, and it is very effective. So if this is something that you're interested, if you're interested in meaningful activities for your kids, if you're interested in giving them more control over what they learn and how they learn, If you are interested in collaborative learning for your kids where they learn from each other instead of just learning from you. If you're interested in letting your kids get up and move around instead of sitting down all day long. If you're interested in real meaningful learning for your kids that is completely connected to real life, then this method might be of interest to you. So I'm doing a series on the Montessori method and this is the very first video, just an introduction of what it's all about, how it started, who started it, and all of that. So I hope that you will continue to watch this series about the Montessori method. If you have any comments about this, any specific questions about this method, you can leave them down in the comments and feel free to share this video with anybody that you think might be interested in the Montessori method as well. And you can also follow me over on Instagram where I will be sharing a little bit more in depth of how um, we can 
incorporate Montessori into my household because I do have a three-year-old that I could be starting with the Montessori method now. I'll also be writing a blog post series that goes along with this video series, so make sure that you are subscribed to my blog. You can find that down in the description box as well. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.